Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this video. I've got here the Bybean CN505 or the CN505. Not sure exactly how they want to call it, but this is a new small power station or solar generator that you could use for some portable power, but not everything. So I'm going to be going over that in this video in fine detail what this can and cannot do. And I'm going to compare it to these other units here of similar size. So that way you know what will work best for you. So stick around for this full review of the Bybean CN505. I've had this for a couple of months now and I've put some good testing on it and I've used it portably and here at home and it's done really well. However, I want to get into the specs real quick and then get straight into the testing so you can see how well this works. This does have a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 614 watt hour battery. Now it is a life PO4 or lithium iron phosphate battery, which means you're looking at at least 2000 cycles on it, which is awesome. It has a 100 watt solar MPPT charge controller that's rated to 19 volts and 4.75 amps. It does have a 100 watt MPPT charge controller. And from everything I've read, it has a 4.75 amp inlet anywhere from 12 to 24 volts. I haven't really been able to get more than about 80 to 85 watts in at one time, but I'll show that here in this video and see how well that works. Now it does have two AC outlets, but only one ground. And these aren't actually grounded. It's just a hole so that way you can actually fit the three prong outlets in it. And that's the same with all solar generators. It has two 5521 DC outlets, as well as one cigarette lighter outlet, but they are not regulated, which is not too abnormal for one of this size. But if I remember correctly, the EcoFlow River Max and the Bujar V716, which is also the exact same as the Bluetti EB70, I believe those have regulated outputs on the 12 volt, at least I know the EcoFlow River Max does. Got lots of USB options, including a 60 watt USB-C. I've mostly used this portably for running my laptop, recharging my batteries for either my tools or my drone. And to that extent, I really had no problem at all. It has done very, very well. But as always, the first test I wanna get into is how well will this run at full load, which is 500 watts, and see how efficient it is. Let's go ahead and get it plugged up and see if it will run its 500 watts continuously, nonstop, and for how long. Well, this is blowing out some pretty warm air. It's at 0% right now. I got about two minutes behind with starting the timer. So we're really about 53 minutes, 54 minutes right now. And this thing is just still going up to 450 watt hours used now. I'm really surprised that it's been on zero for so long and still going at full power. So right before this shut off, I ended up getting 490 watt hours out of it. And I shut this off right when it was done. So we can basically say it was 61 minutes. So we ended up getting 80% efficiency out of this, which is definitely good. 85% is really, really good. You can never get 100% efficiency going from the DC battery to AC output. So I'm definitely happy with the 80%. Now, all the way until about the last 60 seconds, it was running that 490 watt. For the very, very last little bit, it dropped down to 420 watts. So it just goes to show that it really can output that full amount of power all the way until the battery is empty, which is quite impressive. So the next question is, if I plug a power source into this while it's warm, what's gonna happen? Well, this is usually not recommended, but let's see. I'm just gonna do this the easy way. I'm going to take my EcoFlow River Max, put the DC charger on, and plug it in, see what happens. Huh, immediately fills right up. That's odd, it says it's at 100% on the battery while charging. So it's got 76 watts going in. Okay, there the battery adjusts. It's now saying 0% and charging. It'll take 6.5 hours to charge. That's pretty cool that it shows the time and shows me the exact wattage. So here it says it's outputting 94 watts and it's actually receiving 81. And these are very comparably sized units. They weigh about the same. They're about the same dimension as well. This has a 576 watt hour battery, 614 watt hour battery, 600 watt inverter, 500 watt inverter. But one of the biggest differences is that this only has two AC outlets and this one has three and each one actually has one of those little grounding holes for it. Now let's see here what the AC charger does. Boots right up. Basically the same rate. This should go up just a little bit. Yep, 80 watts. 
about 6.5 hours. And that's what I found with this is that regardless of it being AC power or DC power, including just direct DC solar power, around 80 watts is about what I can get into it. Sometimes it's a little bit more, but usually right around 80. This is actually a 100 watt charger. It's rated to 20 volts at five amps. So volts times amps equals watts, but this is what I usually get. So now let's go see what this will do with the solar panel. So I've got my rigid 100 solar panel from poweredportablesolar.com. You can go there and get all sorts of information on solar generators, comparison charts, everything like that. I've got write-ups on reviews on systems like this. We are just getting into winter, so we're not gonna get full sun, but it is a perfectly clear day. There are zero clouds. It's about 9.30 in the morning and the sun rises at 8 a.m. and sets at five. So we do not have that many peak solar hours right now, but I've got this tilted up degree kind of perpendicular to the sun, maybe a little bit steeper. It's supposed to be close to a 70 degree. So let's just see what this will do. These have been really good solar panels. I absolutely love them. So it starts up immediately with the charging says here 0%, charging is going to take about 6.6 .6 hours, 6.7 hours to charge, putting in 78 watts. Now the screen doesn't read out very well, but that's what we've got right there. So this will take all day and then some to charge up. It's been four hours now and we are at 58%. I've turned the panel sideways so it's more perpendicular to the sun, but the sun barely gets up in the sky. It stays pretty low and it's just above some trees that I have over here. So we're still getting 78 watts. It says it needs 2.8 hours. The question that I have is, can I run something while it's charging? So if I put that in, hey, look at that. Light bulb turned right on. So now on the screen, it fluctuates between saying 95 watts, which is what this is using, and 66 watts, which is the input. So that's cool. It actually shows Rather than showing the net difference, it shows an alternating screens, what it's running and what it's putting in, which means we have a negative of about 30 watts because we're getting in about 66 and it's using 92. So actually closer to about 25 watts is our negative draw. So this says it's gonna last 8.3 hours at the current rate. That's pretty cool. I've never actually seen any other system do that before. It always displays the net total. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. So we know that this draws down really well. It holds its power for a long period of time. It's Life PO4, it does as advertised. And that is one of the biggest things that I do these videos for is to see if these systems do as advertised. And so far, this does as advertised, which I really, really like. So the next question is, is it worth the price? So there's a special deal going on on these right now. I don't know if it'll be available by the time you're viewing this, but if you click the links down below, it'll have everywhere to find these and buy them if you're interested. And this unit is normally $480, but you can get it for $380, which is near the same price as a unit that does half of what this does. So that is a really, really good price for everything you're getting here. And I'm absolutely loving the feature where it actually has two displays that alternate showing how much power is going in and how much power is going out rather than just showing the net. I don't mind seeing the net between the power going in and the power going out, but it's just really cool to be able to see the differences there. Now the Jackery 500 as well, it's a decent unit. I've reviewed it in the past. It, it doesn't do everything that it says it's gonna do and that's my issue with Jackery. Overall, Jackery is a big name in the game. This has one outlet, whereas this has two. This has a 60 watt USB-C output, this does not. And these are about $470 usually, so very close in price. But there's also a deal going on on these right now where you can get them for about $425. Again, links down below. I don't know if it'll still be available. And then you have the EcoFlow River Max. This is with the expanded battery. And this too is $470. But this one has a slightly smaller battery capacity than this, but a slightly larger inverter. But the biggest thing is this has twice the solar input as this does. This will input 200 watts of solar, whereas this only inputs 100 watts. So basically the exact same price and the biggest difference is the solar input, and this has three AC outlets on it that are all equally spaced. You can use three three-prong plugs in there, whereas here, you can only use one three-prong plug and one two-prong plug. And then lastly, you have the Bouge RV. Now, this is actually the biggest unit out of these four, and this is 100% identical to the Blue Eddy EV70. But this will go for about $520, which is the most expensive out of all of these, but it has the largest battery, which is about 100 watt hours more than this at 714 watt hours. It too also has 200 watt max solar input to match this. It has an over 700 watt hour battery and a 700 watt inverter. 
So this is getting in slightly bigger for about $50 more. So if you need just a little bit more power, then go for something like this. And this actually has two USB-C 100 watt ports as well as four AC outlets, but only two of them have the grounding holes. So there's kind of a general comparison of how these stack up. They're all pretty similar in price and capability. So do what is ever best for you. I like this unit. I think this is going to be one of my go-to units when I need just a little bit of portable power. And for doing something like charging my drones or especially just charging up my batteries on my cordless tools, this is definitely gonna get that job done. I wouldn't say it's my favorite one of about the 500 watt size, but it is definitely a really good option. And for the price, especially with the coupon going on now, I don't think you can beat that. So I truly appreciate you coming and watching. Hopefully you found this helpful. Remember, you can also check out poweredportablesolar.com for more information on different solar generators and other solar equipment. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more content. Be sure to go check out my other videos. And above all else, be prepared, and I'll see you guys in the next video.